Hey everyone, um, this is Scott Davidson, and uh, I thought today we'd take a look at uh, adaptive components in Revit and running uh, Rhino Inside and Grasshopper to run them. And it's uh, quite interesting. Uh, it uses a lot of, of what Revit does natively, and, and then it uses a little bit of Grasshopper. So just to kind of get you oriented on how this gets set up, um, the first thing is that, that um, you need a uh, adaptive component, standard everyday adaptive component uh, in Revit set up with the adaptive component uh, interface. Uh, you've got your, you know, however many points you're going to run, they're all numbered. Um, you also can have uh, parameters in the adaptive component. These can be driven by Grasshopper, by the way. So later in the process, if you want to change this, that's that's allowed. Um, you can even, you know, obviously change it per adaptive component if if needed. And um, and what I have here is is a this is actually a complicated uh, surface, a sophisticated surface out of Rhino that Grasshoppers, um, you know, placing the points and then and then placing the adaptive components and and then Revit's actually doing the 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 actual generation of the adaptive component. So let's just take a look at, at what it takes to do this. Um, obviously, I'm using the Rhino inside, uh, and uh, so we're going to just open this up here. The, the adaptive component, component, huh, which is kind of interesting, is, uh, is right here, add adaptive component by points. So we're going to supply, in this case, the four points in the correct order and place that adaptive component. You can see that's right here at the end of the definition. Uh, I used a, a model, uh, picked a model category. In this case, it's going to be a generic model. And then in here, we have our series of generic models, two of which are adaptive. Uh, this one's called frame panel. And so that was just really the native uh, Revit model to do all that. Now, I'm going to take a little look here at, in how far, how we got here and and, and what's maybe a little bit special about what you can do with Grasshopper uh, in this case. Uh, here's the model uh, displayed. Uh, we have in the light blue, we have the original surface, which is, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that in a minute. And then what we have here is actually the, in the red is, is the Revit adaptive components um, being previewed in Grasshopper. And so I'll just turn off the preview on those. And we'll start, I'm going to start at the start of this definition and look at what we have here. So I'll just turn on the isoparms here. One of the things I want to be clear about on this is that this is just a surface that is, you know, it's isoparms going in an odd direction. It's trimmed. Nothing's really that straight on, you know, in this case on purpose, of course. Um, but it, it's a fairly complex shape. And so one of the things that's nice about this is you don't have to worry about having exactly the right surface to, to panel in this case, because we're going to use Grasshopper and, and, and a plugin for Grasshopper called Paneling Tools to now split this up. So I'm going to turn off some of these lines a little bit. And and so what, if you look over at the Grasshopper definition here, what we do is we, we take the untrimmed surface. So that would be the surface with you know without this opening at the bottom. And... Um, and without some of the, the wiggly trim at the top. And we're going to actually split the untrimmed version. And so we'll make a grid over that. We'll also take that and we'll, we'll make both vertical and horizontal grids. Then what we're going to do is we're going to make uh, uh, cells over it, you know, rectangular cells. And we're going to select only the cells that intersect this trimmed version of the surface and so we come back and we we filter out you can see here what we have is with paneling tools what we can create is a series of cells these are the cells that we're going to put the adaptive components on but some sit at the border of the original surface you can see here and some fit fully inside the surface uh, that, that we have here. And this could be a poly surface it could be uh, you know a series of solids it, it doesn't necessarily only have to be a surface uh, anyway so that and then, then now we can have some fun with grasshopper because grasshopper can select and filter these different conditions uh, we can do something with we can do one thing with internal 
panels, for instance, ones that are fully encased in the original surface. And we can do different things on the borders and the edges as our full quad rectangular panels maybe break down based on what's happening at this edge here. And so uh, let me just um, uh, turn that off there. And um, we'll just kind of come down here and so we go through the process of filtering what's inside and outside and if we come down here i can open these up and you can see here generally what the easiest thing to do is to have it place by by using paneling tools place four points at each one here and then place an adaptive component using that original add adaptive component uh, that we talked about at the start of this so another thing that, that, that we're finding out people would like to do is what do you do at the edges? What do you do when the condition starts to break down a little bit in terms of the kind of the classic four-sided, uh, in this case, four-sided panels? Well, you could have Grasshopper decide how many points are at each panel and they do something different at each one. Um, and that's, you know, that's some filtering that can go on here. Or in this case, what I've done is I've actually taken the uh taken the um let's enable that turn out the preview what i've done is 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 we've taken the surface the surface area uh underneath those panels that are partial and then we've trimmed them with grasshoppers now and then i've added them as direct shapes in uh revit so from grasshopper grasshopper actually made these trims now and now i have full solid panels at those edges as if it was some sort of trim for this opening or something on the building level and um, and, and some sort of solid condition as we get to these more complicated shapes that we want to deal with and you can see over here if I come over to the Revit model um, you know we also have those uh, those panels uh, as direct shapes and and what is helpful there is of course they'll show up correctly in elevations um, they, um, you know, you can use them for your for your drawings uh, because they're actual Revit objects. Uh, you can actually schedule them the same way that you would schedule the adaptive components. So these these actually could all exist on the same, you know, scheduling them on the same with the same generic model object in this case, and. Um, you can add parameters and and all that information. So this is just a quick way to, to think about um, how the adaptive component uh, can be driven through Grasshopper using uh, paneling tools. And so uh, we'll highlight a little bit at the uh, bottom part of this guide um, some of the important points that you need to know and uh, hopefully have an example model. Uh, with this too. So thanks for your time. Hopefully this will help uh, move forward. Thanks.